Well, welcome everyone. Um, I don't know about you, but that video really makes me proud to be from Perkins Falls. I love that video. Uh, thank you all for being here. It's great to see so many uh, friendly faces. It's great to be back in this space. It's been a number of years since we've been out here. Uh, but the city of Fergus Falls has done a, uh, a lot of work and made a lot of investments in this facility. So it's great to see all of you out here. Uh, thanks to Brandon and Brooke from the city for all of the uh, all their efforts to make this this facility uh, back to what what it should be for the community. That's a, that's a true asset, and I think that uh, having this event here, I, I'm really glad to have. If if, we're, if this facility is going to continue to be an asset for the community, we're going to need to support it as a community. So it's great to see all of you here today, uh, and I just want to say. Welcome again. Thanks especially to all the businesses that are here. This is an event that we're going to recognize the business in this community. And the business community is the backbone of Fergus Falls in so many different ways. So this is a special day. day I always look forward to so many different organizations coming together to recognize the business community. Thanks, Lisa, for putting this together. Lisa and the Chamber staff. And uh, I'll just... I just, before I introduce Lisa and Megan, I just want to say that um, if you look at communities, successful communities, regardless of where they're at, there's one common trait, and that is that there's a common purpose. There's partnerships between the public, the private, and nonprofit sectors coming together around a common goal to move the community forward. That's what we all believe in. That's what we're here to do today. Thank you all for being here. Would you please help me say thank you and welcome to Lisa Warren. Uh, thank you, Ben. And I do want to echo what Ben had said about uh, welcoming everyone back to the Big Wood Event Center. Brooke and her staff here have been fabulous to work with. So if you are looking at hosting any type of company meeting, planning session, just a place where you need to get away and you need some great technology, this is the place to choose. So make sure that uh, uh, you do that. And again, we appreciate the investments in the technology that the city made. So I'd like to introduce Megan Beckler. She is our past president for the Fergus Falls Chamber. And we are going to start with the Fergus Falls Business Gives Recognition. Um, once again, we, we've got your plaques in the back, so please grab them either on your way out or any time during the program. But Fergus Falls Business Gives is a unique program where we recognize chamber members. As uh, Mayor Ben said, it's the partnerships between public, private, and nonprofit entities, but we recognize our chamber members for the many important and significant contributions they make in our community. Our recognition program began in 2009, where we recognized at that time 11 businesses. Of course, we learned at that time that most businesses don't want recognition, so we have to twist a few arms. But I'm pleased to say that today, we are recognizing 49 businesses in Fergus Falls who, who dedicate funds and resources back to our community. They are recipients of our 2023 Fergus Falls Business Gifts. The awards, again, as I said, are displayed in the back, and of course we invite you to pick them up on your way out. Now, as we announce each business, instead of doing a parade in front of the stage and handing them out, we want each employee from the business that's being recognized to stand up and stay standing until we've announced all 49 of our recipients of Fergus Falls Business Gives. And then we want everyone to clap really, really loudly at the end. All right, so of course we're starting with the A's. Um, Affinity Plus Federal Credit Union. We want to recognize American Federal Bank, American Inn by Wyndham, Bell Bank, Bremer Bank, Calililic Designs, Country Inn and Suites, Dandelion and Burdock, Elevate, Farmers Insurance, Jessica Lopez Agency, Fergus Home and Hardware, FM Bank, Frontier Marina and Power Sports. Excellent, and then businesses are recognized for giving cash or in-kind contributions to, ch to charitable organizations. Uh, recognition is based on percentage, so a smaller business who gives $1,000 receives the same recognition as one who contributes 10,000 to the community. Because of their generosity, we have a thriving arts community, including theater and art galleries featuring local and nationally renowned artists. And let's continue to thank Gate City Bank, 
Great Plains Natural Gas, Green Plains, Envision Eye Care, Jagger Furniture, JK Sports and JK Outdoors, Kevin Johnson CFP, Lake Region Healthcare, Larson Insurance, Layton Broadcasting, Mid Minnesota Federal Credit Union, Minnesota Motor Company. And over the past years, we've accomplished so much in Fergus Falls due to amazing volunteers, many provided by these businesses. We applaud the businesses who allow their employees to plan events like Summerfest, serve on a board of directors or for many of the nonprofits, as well as volunteering at chamber events like our annual golf scramble. But we want to thank uh, those who volunteered and will uh, continue to share our thanks with Multi Business Solutions. Thank you for already standing. Uh, Nature's Call Septic Service, Nelson Auto Center, Northern Contours, Northwestern Bank, Otter Tail Power Company, Otter Tail Mid Dakota Coaches, Outstate Brewing Company, Park Region, Pebble Lake Golf Club, Penny Cakes, and Perks Coffee and Tea. Thank you to those who encourage your staff to volunteer as members to our service clubs. Through their fundraising efforts, Fergus Falls is now home to a new accessible and inclusive playground at Dr. Allen Magnuson Park. They've raised enough money for classrooms and to fight cancer and are currently collecting donations for a splash pad downtown. Rody Insurance Services, Security Insurance and Investments, Senior Perspective, Service Food Market, Sign Guys, Soapworks Naturals, Swan Lake Resort and Campground, The Market, Vector Windows, and Victor Lentine Company. Well, we are so fortunate to have these businesses in our communities. We want to thank everyone who supports our businesses, who in turn strengthen our community and enhance the quality of life in Fergus Falls and throughout Otter Tail County. They give back to our community in countless ways, but are modest at best in promoting their efforts. So let's show all of the businesses appreciation for their generosity to our community with enormous round of applause. Megan Beckler for being our board chair for the past uh, year. Again, just a great way to show your volunteerism and commitment to the business community. Thanks, Megan. <laughs> well, now we'd like to welcome our moderator for the program. Uh, I believe he's going to give us a history lesson from the beginning of Fergus Falls and talk about every event that happened up until today. No. Chris Schulke is here with the Otter Tail County Historical Society Museum. I believe he's also the board chair and a volunteer himself who visit Fergus Falls. So thank you, Chris. Thank you, Lisa. Okay, so there are over 3,200 people buried at this. Oh, wrong notes. I'm sorry. That's, uh, that's, that's Saturday. So thank you. Uh, it's so great to see a lot of younger faces here, you know. Uh, although Sue, you're ageless, so I'm sorry. <laughs> But you know, from the, the coming city of the Northwest to a bigger and better Fergus Falls to refresh Fergus Falls, yeah, you guys, the business community uh, is, is the backbone of Fergus Falls. It makes other things possible like a history museum and an art center. So thank you all for all that you do. All right, what's going on here? So, you know, uh, we have definitely, as you can see, some new leadership in the community, uh, younger faces, and uh, they certainly have led the community in so many different ways. So, I, you know, why are you even up here? So what I'm going to do is ask you to introduce yourselves about you, your organization, and your top two or three per uh, priorities of your organization. And you have about one minute, no, two minutes to do that per person. So I'd like, uh, we'll start with um, Mayor Ben Shire from the city of Fergus Hall. Thanks, thanks, Chris. Uh, well, first of all, it's, it's really nice to be sitting on a love seat with Rolaco, so. <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm Ben Shire, I'm the mayor of the city of Fergus Falls. I think, I hope everyone knows what the city of Fergus Falls is. Um, so just 
So a couple of priorities that the city's working on right now. First of all, we're going through our budgeting process, which um, like most cities in the state of Minnesota, there's a lot of pressures on our budgets. And we're also at the same time balancing the, 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 the basic services that we provide, public safety, streets, infrastructure, parks, with trying to get ahead or catch up, I guess, might be a better way to play it, with our streets. So we're discussing right now a franchise fee that would, uh, as proposed, would raise about $1.3 million annually that's dedicated to the streets. We've identified about $26 million worth of projects in Fergus Falls um, for our major street projects. So that's what's being proposed. There's going to be plenty of opportunity for the public to, to discuss that. So anyway, second thing I'd say is, is, is finishing some of the projects that the voter, well, the voter uh, supported sales tax initiatives, the aquatic center and the dealer improvements, that would be number two. Six, I'll remind you, 60% of the voters in purpose falls into those two projects. So really excited about those, making sure that we execute um, on the wishes of the voters. And third, is just finishing up the downtown redevelopment project. We've made major investments in two blocks right now. Um, the splash pad is under construction. Um, it's gonna open next spring, but then also, uh, we, when we went into those projects, we said we're gonna use public funds to leverage private investment. And there's a $7 million project right now underway at the mill. There's, uh, we're actively seeking proposals for the redevelopment of the dairy site. And there's a project, I think it's north of 9 million from FM Bank on the Shopko site. So we're really excited about that private investment in the downtown corridor through the, uh, through the investment in the city. All right, thank you, Mayor Shire. All right, Rolando from Visit Fergus Falls. Are you? You weren't going to try his last name? No. Rolando Venezuela. Okay. Now I'm on. The second Venezuelan in Fergus Falls. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> I'm just there. All right. Well, uh, my name is Rolando Venezuela. I am the new executive director of PC Fergus Falls. Um, as you know, tourism is a great economic driver for the city because people come here to stay in our own hotels, they eat in our restaurants, they buy stuff in our stores. So visit first Falls is totally determined to put the city on the map for for visitors to come, for people to come and visit us and leave some money on the community and hopefully get excited with the community and move here. Um, and I know that's possible because I'm, I am the living group of that. <laughs> <laughs> so, to put Fergus Falls on the map, uh, this is Fergus Falls have been doing a lot of stuff. Number one, we created a new brand from this is Fergus Falls just to create, you know, uh, a personality and, and, and just a particular personality for this is Fergus Falls because without a brand, you have nothing with your own something. The second step was creating a new website because that's our presentation card to the world. So we created a super beautiful website. Please visit it. www.visitfergusfalls.com is, is, a, is a website more image and media driven because if you don't show what you have, you just don't sell it. You know that, right? So um, the third one you know, is apply all the marketing uh, and tactics and that we can like you know in a class creating constantly content to put on social media to put on our website we just created a blog and this is a public invitation the blog on the website is the place where we are going to show why first falls is a special community we're going to feature you know our our companies our businesses our people that makes out of Fergus Falls a very special community. So if you sometimes get like you know inspired, you're more than welcome to participate. And and uh, <laughs> and uh, with the with the new technology of Google that is like the G4. Now we have an idea who is visiting our website. And as we speak, we have all Google campaigns going on all around our borders, like North Dakota, South Dakota, Iowa, uh, Wisconsin, and other cities that we found out that are visiting this meeting in our website, like Chicago, Dallas, all that kind of stuff. And that campaign that has been going on for a month and a half already brought more than 12 
800 people to our website. So, so we are rolling. And the most important thing that I wanted to say <laughs> is that, you know, one of the most important things that Fergus Fox, DC Fergus Fox does is just uh, marketing your events and our events, the events of the community. That's why we made it super, super easy to go to our website and click on the little button that says submit your events. And then that event is going to come to me and we're going to start promoting your event. So, Help us to help you because it's more than one person and more than one institution needed to create a successful uh, destination campaign. So this is the job of the whole community. Uh, and if we collaborate with each other, I'm pretty sure that we're going to have a wonderful uh, travel destination. I think the latest blog is especially well done. I'm done. The latest blog? And the website is especially well done, so. Yeah. Uh, All right, so. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Make sure you read that. All right, Ryan Tungset, who is the interim executive director of Creative Fergus Falls. You only have about 30 seconds. No, you I actually, I told him I was only going to take 30 seconds. Okay, so he could have my time. Yeah. Uh, I'm the interim executive director for Greater Fergus Falls, Ryan Tungset. Um, our mission is to support and grow business in Fergus Falls. So we do that through business retention and expansion. Um, businesses locally looking to expand, whether it's site selection or looking at uh, permitting processes, uh, any legal things that can stand, but also consulting and, and helping to grow that way. Um, we also do business attractions. So we're all looking for developers, looking for people who want to move to Fergus, looking for what business opportunities there are here and how we can promote the city and bring new business to Fergus Falls. And then also entrepreneurship. So through our entrepreneur initiative, we have consultants that help people looking to start a business. And we also have a monthly entrepreneur mastermind where we invite people to come in and learn from people who've been through it. And we try and keep those mostly local, so local entrepreneurs speaking to lo local people about how they grow, challenges they face, what they've done. Thank you, thank you, Ryan. And finally, last but not least, Amy Baldwin, a proud graduate of University of North Dakota, coming off the wild shellacking of NDSU this last week. <laughs> so she's on cloud nine. Chris, those are probably fighting words. Uh, all right, Amy, are you ready to go? No. Uh, all right, let's just... Okay, Chelsea, do yes, I need to talk? Just because uh, I wouldn't let you have the Chamber Cafe place. She's talk. Here. No, She's off now. Oh, go ahead. Now. Yeah, there you go. I have support from Ryan. That's okay. right. Uh, all right, well, it's good afternoon. I'm Amy Baldwin. I'm the Community Development Director for Otterville County, as well as the Executive... Executive Director for the Community Development Boundaries. Is that possible? Yes. Gina's going to get Brooke now uh, right, to see if we can get some tech support. Yeah. Chris, I, oh, she's got a microphone, so we're good. Yep, that'll work. We're quick. What are you going to do? All uh, right, so I also gifted some of my time to Rolando, so we'll be, I'll be brief here. So in addition, um, as part of my job as Community Development Director, I'm also the Executive Director of the county's Community Development Agency, or its EDA, and I've been in that role since 2019. Uh, the top three priorities from a community development perspective uh, are expanding housing investment, uh, both new construction as well as reinvesting in our existing housing stock, uh, bringing resources to projects and opportunities and making sure that we are uh, bringing those dollars so there's, there's places for people to live when they, they come here that meet their needs. A second area is promoting business and workforce development and we work across a lot of partnerships in that work as well. And then finally, there's a focus on fostering public-private partnerships. And one example of that work would be uh, our continued efforts to expand the access to high-speed internet or broadband throughout Ottertail County. And uh, we've been making some great progress with our local providers. I see Park Region in the room today. They've been working really hard to expand areas um, uh, access and making sure everyone has that technology to grow either their business uh, access for education, personal use, et cetera, to have that, that technology at their home. 
So that's me. I want my turn. Please? No. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. So um, I'm Lisa Workman. I'm the president of the Fergus Falls Area Chamber of Commerce. And to appease Chris, I'll share a little bit of history. Uh, the chamber was founded in 1886, so we're 137 years old. Some days we feel it, but uh, since uh, 1886, we've served the business community. The business community know, learned, but even back then, that when they unite and do things together, they accomplish more. So our role as the chamber is to be their lead advocate, to provide resources, and we work tire tirelessly to maintain a healthy business climate. Um, we're the largest professional business organization in Ottertail County, and uh, I've been part of the chamber for almost 20 years. I started as a board member uh, for several years, and then now for almost, I don't know, 15, 16 years have been the president. So that's a little bit about the organization. All seven of our strategic priorities are listed on the yellow sheets on your table. Feel free to take those with you. There's a handy dandy calendar of events on the back. Um, but to narrow things down a little bit, um, one of our top priorities is to convene leaders and influencers, such as this event today. Um, that helps us pr pursue clarity and distinction among the many similar roles who all work tirelessly for the better betterment of Fergus Falls. We're also, one thing that makes us a little different is that we are an advocate for the business community. Um, we help leverage those government liaisons by sharing our business voice with the policymakers, lawmakers, and decision makers throughout the city, the county, even at the state and federal level. And then thirdly, we do work on economic development, but in a much different way from Greater Fergus Falls. Uh, we're supporting current and local businesses that are already here to help them continue to grow, to help them uh, promote their business. So, you know, you may hear of shop local campaigns. Uh, the Fergus Falls Chamber is gen generally the driver of those campaigns. And in addition to that, we work on supporting workforce strategies and we do many events like the Career Expo that's coming up next week. Today's a deadline to register. Um, so register for that if you have employees and if you want employees in the future. Okay, Chris, I'll share. All right, thank you. So uh, we're going to start with some questions here. <clears throat> you know, um, with so many great organizations like yours uh, focused on improving Fergus Falls and Otterville County in general. What is the specific focus of your organization and how does your work kind of dovetail into one or more of the other community partners? So what, how do you dovetail into the work of the others, but what are your specific focus of your organizations? Uh, ben, we'll just start with you. Sounds good. So. Uh, I think the, the, our goal is to work with these partners up here and with the partners in this room and with partners across the community to make Fergus Falls the most livable city that we can, right? So I, as again, again, go back to the, the core functions of the city is to provide public safety and infrastructure. And uh, I would say, so we, we have, Fergus Falls, in my opinion, and I may be biased, but we have the best city staff working for us in the state of Minnesota. We've got Bill Sommore, Sandy, Matt, and Guy O'Reilly. We do the best that we can. When it comes to public safety and infrastructure, uh, we have true professionals working with the city of Fergus Falls. But I think that we would all agree that, well, most of us would agree, we wouldn't all agree on much of anything, quite honestly. But, uh, but I think most of us would agree that basic infrastructure, and public safety, those are those are core elements to the city, but nobody wants to live in a community, at least I don't want to live in a community, that that's the only thing that that city has to provide, right? I don't think the people, the workers that you all need, I don't think businesses are going to expand or relocate to communities that simply focus on that. So that's why we're building these partnerships up here with these organizations across the city, to make Fergus Falls the most livable. And I would go back to the fact that last November, when the citizens of Fergus Falls overwhelmingly voted to raise their own taxes to provide amenities to the community. That tells me that the people of Fergus Falls, they want to have a community that is vibrant, that is moving forward, and that provides the activities that's going, that are going to you know, attract families, that are going to attract workers, that are going to attract businesses. So our job, quite frankly, is to just don't lose sight of the basic core services that we're providing. And I'm confident that our, our city staff 
is, is on top of that, like I mentioned. But then second of all, how do we partner with these groups to make Fergus Falls and provide the amenities to make Fergus Falls the most livable community in Fergus, in, in Minnesota? Hello? 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 <laughs> I think he's dying. No. Can you hear? Go ahead. Hello? Yep. Just share it. I'm not going to get that close with him. <laughs> What's up with the batteries? Um, well, I mean, the main, uh, the main objective of this Fergus Falls is to put heads on banks. Um, to attract visitors that stay in town and, um, and hopefully they come back again and again and again. And uh, to promote everything that we have, all the wonders that we have in the area. Because Fergus Falls is the heart of Oratel County. And uh, we are promoting all Oratel County and we are promoting Fergus Falls as a hub to explore the land of 1,048 lakes uh, from here, from the coziness of the biggest city in the county and uh, the heart of the county. So that's our priority. And uh, how we work with, um, with all these institutions, we partner to organize events and to uh, promote events also uh, that are going to attract visitors and that we believe are going to put some heads on beds. Thank you, Melinda. Brian? Yeah. Um, our main mission is economic development. Uh, and we, we do that through uh, well, both public and private partnerships, that's gets mentioned a lot, but we're the, the middleman between the city, county, state, and we can play that role where if you, if you have questions of how something's gonna work, what incentives are out there, what is TIF, we want to grow. Uh, we're, we're here to answer those questions, to find people you can partner with, um, and, and to help grow business here. I, I'm unique in this role, I think, in that I've served both on the Chamber Board and the Visit Fergus Falls Board. So that partnership and working together, finding ways, events that we can host together, things that we work together is very important. And then I'll also echo what Ben said about city staff coming into this role, not knowing how things worked and meeting with city staff and working on these partnerships that are outstanding to work with and we're positioned for growth. There's, Come and talk to us. We're we're here to help. Amy, I think I'm back on. Oh, okay. am I back on? Yeah. All right. Uh, so, from the county's perspective, we we do work uh, collaboratively with all these folks as well. Uh, how we look at our priority of focus or our specific focus from a community development perspective is to uh, strengthen all the communities throughout Ottertail County and with an intentional view of being complementary and additive and really making sure that we're supporting those existing efforts or opportunities that might exist in specific communities. Uh, all of our communities are very different across the county and there's different opportunities um, in each of them that help um, you know, move towards their own locally identified needs and um, you know, strategic visions that they might have. And so we work with them to, to help execute on those visions and advance them, um, whether it's bringing, um, you know, partnering with resources or another agency. You know, I, I send people over to Greater Fergus Falls if it's a Fergus Falls specific economic development, um, entrepreneurial support, and you know, their service area is beyond the city limits of Fergus Falls, so it does go out into a, a pretty big ring around um, the city, and so uh, covers a, a fairly large chunk of Fergus Falls. So we do a lot of referring back and forth, and we know what each other are working on. These priorities that are being talked about aren't new to anyone up here, and so we you know, really make sure that if, you know, if I know someone who's you know, working on something, we're not going to take on, well, let's try to do something um, you know, the same and, and really don't duplicate those efforts. Um, you know, a couple areas that we do work closely with the city, um, one is the child care initiatives right now. That's something that we work on countywide, but there's also a locally specific um, effort in Curtis Falls through the 
uh, rural child care engagement program, and we've layered in our services and resources and help um, share each other's um, information, and, and we, we meet together and, and bring people together on, on that topic. Um, we also really appreciate the change of partnership in elevating our message here locally and making sure that word on what we're working on, what are those resources, whether it's on workforce or child care, are getting out to the community overall. So again, we know what each other are doing. Lisa's great. She coordinates um, through the chamber uh, regular meetings that we are talking about these things. So we know, you know we, we aren't working in silos, I guess, is the, the bottom line. Thank you. Yeah, Amy's correct. Um, a lot of people don't realize that our organizations get together on a quarterly basis for simple information sharing, and then that will spark partnerships or collaboration, things that we can do together. You know, as one of the chamber's main role of convening leaders and influencers, we know how important that is because we know that resources can be scarce and time can be scarce. So we want to, again, magnify and promote what each other is doing. And the way we do that is through our joint exec quarterly meetings. Um, another way that we convene leaders and work with Ottertail County, the city of Fergus Falls, is we have um, several times a year, we have elected leaders luncheons, meetings that our access leaders, stakeholder, and visionary level members are invited to, where they can have one-on-one -on -one conversations with our county commissioners, our city council members, state representatives, even uh, at the federal level, we have their staff that's, we get their ear, and so we get to share those stories of what policymaker decisions, how those impact our, our local businesses. Um, and we're an advocate for those businesses, so in addition to some one-on-one -on -one leader meetings, we also take the pulse, get the information, send you surveys for things that are going on in our community. You know, as Ben mentioned before, the city, um, overwhelmingly, the residents, the voters, approved two significant projects in Fergus Falls with the Aquatic Center and the Dee Lagoon Park improvements. And as the chamber, we wanted to know what the business community thought of adding a local option sales tax, so we surveyed them. We had enormous results and more than 70% of the business community said, yes, we want this, we're willing to take on this local option sales tax, and so we can share that information with the decision makers, whether it's at count, city council or at county commissioners or even at the state level, we give them the impact of what it means to our business community, uh, whether they support it, whether they oppose it, a, a referendum or a measure, and um, again, we can share that information as well because we appreciate that our members are listening to us and you know take that information to heart. They feel like they get a voice and then it's amplified. And I got one more thing to touch on. Um, and I'll make this part quick. So, you know, working with economic development and with Greater Fergus Falls, I think of it as Greater Fergus Falls is the organization that's going out and recruiting new businesses and working with entrepreneurs. So they kind of take the lead when we get out the golden shovels and do a groundbreaking. But boy, when that business is celebrating an anniversary or a grand opening or a new location or expansion, we show up with the big scissors and the ribbon for the ribbon cutting. So we work hand in hand on different things, but just in different areas. Excellent, thank you all. <clears throat> so uh, this is for uh, Greater Fergus Falls, Ottertail County in the city. This next question. Around the state and beyond, economic development has changed. According to Kelly Ash of the Center for Rural Policy Development, the days of chasing smokestacks, in other words, the big industry type jobs, are gone and replaced with chasing people. Since people have more career options and oftentimes can choose to live and work wherever. So what is your organization doing in this new landscape of economic development? And how are you collaborating with the other organizations? We will start with Greater Fergus Falls this time. Thanks, Chris. Um, I slightly disagree with the statement. We are chasing, <laughs> we are chasing small sex to a certain extent, but we can't do that in a vacuum. If we're going out and looking for industry to come to Fergus Falls, we need to look at all of the parts that go in play. We would love to bring an employer into the city that has 
500 jobs paying 100,000 a year, 500,000 a year. But what does that do to existing employers? Do we have the workforce to, to fill those jobs? Uh, you know, any factory job, all the workforce, housing, and employers coming in all play a part. So we have to weigh those options and look at what can we pursue with the resources we have, and then how can we assist other organizations in pursuing those things, such as housing. There's a group that we're working with currently that's interested in housing. There's both from a public side and from a private side on building, building new housing. So those things all weigh in, and we have to work with the organizations because we can't just bring in big business and say, here, here we go, here's a job. Who's going to work there? Where do they live? What do they do? Those things all factor in. Amy? Yeah, thanks. I think you know, from a countywide um, economic development view, it, that also it isn't that chasing smokestacks or even that business recruitment isn't a priority of ours because we're looking at that broader county landscape and, and again, supporting all of our communities and working, you know, we, we have uh, worked with Greater Fergus Falls on some site selection. Um, Requests so companies who are looking to locate within communities and sometimes the, the data or the content that's required within those proposals has that county wide lens and, and we're there to help be a partner in providing some of that data and information to help support their efforts. So that's a you know um, you know we from our overall philosophy do take that broader chasing people approach I guess though we're not that desperate yet. We're not literally running down. Um, but uh, so our, we do have four strategies that we talk about a lot and across um, our broader economic development group, which includes Ottertail Lakes Country Association. You know, they are a separate nonprofit, um, but works really hand in hand with the county on on some of these efforts. So, you know, one being on the map, Orlando mentioned putting Fergus Falls on the map, and then we layer above that to put Ottertail County on the map, and not just for the visitors, but those potential workers. And then a lot of the work that I specifically focus on is around that infrastructure, and, and we're not going to talk about roads, and we're definitely not going to talk about roundabouts today. Um, <laughs> but if you want to talk about roundabouts, come over to the Government Services Center at 4 o'clock today. There is an open house about the bird driver roundabout. So there's my, my pitch for that. Um, and but the infrastructure that we think about is housing, child care, broadband. Um, what do the people need if they're even in broadband for visitors to come? But um, for people who might be thinking to come here, they need to know that that infrastructure to live um, is available for them, uh, hopefully when they make that choice to live and work um, or start a business here in Ottertail County. Uh, the third area uh, from our strategies that we look at is the employer resources, and it's uh, currently focused more on the workforce and supporting the workforce of our, our current employers and helping them grow and, and even sustain their operations in Ottertail County. And then the final area we work on it is around that people side and when the people come, making sure that they feel welcome and how do we make sure they're connected appropriately within their community. Um, and have those supports to, to really make a, a lasting um, relationship with the community because we know it's a lot about the feel of, of being in a community, wanting to be in that community because the employment options, the, the, the mobility is, is prevalent and if, if people don't have another connection beyond just their work, they're not going to stay in the community. So we kind of take that more kind of broader approach to, to that change in, in uh, economic development. Yeah, I would just add um, the changes in economic development. So I remember, many of you probably do too, but I remember the day and where I was at when uh, uh, when Target announced that they were leaving Fergus, and that was a big moment for our community because it changed, right? And there was a lot of panic and a lot of fear and a lot of fun. We're dying. And uh, the city, Fergus Falls at that time, two things. First of all, we recognized that if we're going to be successful, we're going to need to change the way we do economic development. We're going to need to partner with the business community, and, that, and that's why we formed Greater Fergus Falls. And that was to leverage what the city was doing and to include the broader business community uh, into that conversation. And I would, I would say that uh, that's been successful, right? It's because of the people in this room and the support and the engagement that they've brought to the economic development efforts of the city that have made that successful. Second of all, 
We said, you know, we, we don't have control over Target or Shopco or Herbergers or some of these corporate uh, entities and the decisions they make. But what we do have control over is the assets we have in our community, our historic downtown, our beautiful river that runs through. If we're going to attract people to this community, we're going to need to make investments in those communities, in those local businesses, in those local assets that make Fergus Falls a unique place that people want to live. And I would say, Fergus Falls is growing. Right? Not every rural community in Minnesota can say that they're growing. We're over 14,000 people for the first time. Would we like to grow more? Yeah, I mean, that comes with its challenges, of course, too. But I think at that moment, back in November of 2017, we realized we need to change the way we do economic development to engage the broader business community, and we need to focus on our assets. And we've done that, and I think you can see the results and how those results. Excellent. Thank you, Ben. Okay, next question. So, if economic developers are focused on recruiting people to communities, there are no, there's no doubt that, as you well know, uh, a lot of your local, our local employers are short on people too. So, what are you doing to solve the workforce shortage? Uh, how do we get more people here? And what does the community need in order to attract and retain people in our community. Um, should we start with you, Lisa? Thanks, Chris. I, I have to laugh, though. He did ask for the Chamber Cafe flags. I thought, ooh, I don't know. He could be, you know, there'd be retribution for what I put him through in the past. Anyhow, um, back to the question, sorry. Um, yeah, we, we realized firsthand that employers both businesses and nonprofits are are challenged with the workforce shortage, and we do need more people here. Um, as the chamber, you know, when when Visit Fergus Falls and Ottertail County are working to put us on the map, we need to be the first stop of welcoming them, and we are enthusiastic about Fergus Falls when it comes to this being a great place to live, a great place to work, do business, visit, all of those things. And so many times as visitors, they do stop at the chamber first, and you know, some are. Well, they're, they're like, oh my gosh, you guys love this town. We're like, how could we not? It's fabulous. So that, you know, that's one of the ways that we try to help with that workforce shortage. The other thing too is, as I mentioned before, the College and Career Expo, there'll be over a thousand students from the region that will be at that event next Thursday, October 26th at Fergus Falls High School. There's still time for booth registration at fergusfalls.com. The point of doing a college and career expo for high school students is to show them the number of opportunities, the variety of opportunities that are right here in their own backyard. So that if they go off to college to somewhere else, that they feel welcome in coming back, that they know that there are jobs for them when they come back. And as employers, we're helping them shift maybe their messaging from the recruiting to about the job itself, like here's all the tasks that you do, to let's promote the businesses and what they have to offer. So we want to be a partner in that way. And of course, you know, specifically task-oriented person that I am, our members post those job openings on our website and we share them on our social media. We had over 40,000 visits to our website alone last year for job postings, and every one of those job postings were then also posted with the Ottertail County Works website too. So again, again, another collaboration. Finally, one of the things that the chamber is working on when it comes to workforce as a strategy is we're going to be we're in the process of developing a leadership program that will combine leadership skills with connections to the community. As Amy mentioned, it needs to stick. If people move here, they need to feel welcome. They need to feel connected to the community. So we'll be taking on that role in another way through a leadership program, in addition to events and fun networking things that the chamber puts on. It's, again, those are workforce strategies. Yeah, they're a lot of fun, but again, if people are getting involved and engaged in the community, they're more likely to stay here than to look somewhere else. How old do you want? Amy. Okay, Amy. Yeah, well thanks Lisa. You know, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about the youth workforce um, strategy and, and efforts that we have going on right now too. But, you know, I mentioned the on the map already and that's out of the Lakes Country leading that effort. Um, 
This year, just to mention one of their specific initiatives, is a partnership with the University of Minnesota. And it's both promoting Ottertail County um, on campus, at sporting events. If you go to a hockey game this year, you'll see Ottertail Lakes Country, the, the otter, find your inner otter, um, around the band at Mary Uchi Arena and the digital advertising. Um, we are on field at uh, go for football games this year. And so, And then in addition to being there um, on campus and having a physical presence in front of that student population, we're also bringing those students to Ottertail County for different experiences, both connecting with employers here in within the county across different industries to help them understand um, that there are career opportunities in rural, and they might not have thought about that before, and maybe being focused in the Twin Cities um, and maybe from the Twin Cities or another urban area. So exposing that rural lifestyle that we all get to enjoy and love um, and exposing them to that in addition to those career opportunities. Uh, and then more internally focused with the county, we have a strategy called OTC Works and that is, um, has three action areas. The, the OTC is opportunities, training, and connections in addition to Ottertail County. Our clever marketing people did that. Um, but the opportunities is sharing and promoting those uh, employment opportunities across the county as well as resources for our employers to tap into maybe untapped or underutilized labor pools. Uh, helping our employers um, recruit and retain those workers. You know, we do the work to, to recruit them, you get them on board, and, and so we try to bring training and, and um, learning around how to uh, keep those workers um, engaged at your organization, and then finally the connections and creating um, partnerships and, and areas around job readiness. Um, we have a skills training program right now with M-State that we are continuing to advance, um, reducing barriers to employment for individuals who may want to be there but have those barriers, whether it's transportation or um, maybe something within their, their background that's really limiting their employment potential and then that future workforce piece. And so we have a fairly expansive youth workforce effort going on right now where we'll, we'll have a heavy presence. We've been helping with the, the Career Expo that Lisa mentioned. Um, we just had another field trip yesterday around the automotive trade. Uh, we had manufacturing the week before that we're hosting um, and coordinating and offsetting any financial costs that the schools have uh, for having students participate in that. So if there's a sub um, that needs a substitute teacher that needs to be brought on to um, support that, the transportation costs are all being covered through this initiative and it's open to all the school districts across the county. So we've had hundreds and hundreds of students now go through those um, field trips and then also getting you know that hands-on. So it might not be today, it might not be tomorrow, but um, if they leave and, and know that they have uh, exposure to employers and employment and career opportunities, hopefully they'll know they can come back and uh, make a future here in Ottawa County. All right, so just two more questions and then we'll take some questions we have from the audience. Uh, this next question, each of you could probably go on for a half hour, so I'm going to please ask you to limit your enthusiasm. What makes Fergus Falls a livable community and what are we doing to make Fergus Falls a welcoming community? I mean, that's right. The crux of it. So, um, Mayor Shire. Yeah, sure. I'll, 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 I'll try to be quick. Uh, I think I've talked about my vision of what a livable community is. Uh, so, I'll talk about the welcoming community part of it. And I think there's a lot of things we're doing right. Like, if you look at Rolando here, right? Like, Rolando came to this community as an outsider, felt welcome, and he's living here now. He's contributing as a part of our community. So, obviously, there's things we're doing right. But I think everyone in this room's heard someone in the community's tell a story about living here 5, 10, 15 years and they're still an out to consider an outsider, they don't feel welcome in the too. So anyway, I think any any organization always needs to, as a community, we need to look at ourselves and examine our strengths and weaknesses. We're right now currently the city of Fergus Falls is working with uh, Otter Tail Lakes Country Association, the uh, Human Rights Commission of Fergus Falls, Mike Trudeau is here, he's leading up the effort for the Human Rights Commission, and the uh, University of Minnesota Extension on a welcoming communities initiative that is doing exactly that. Just looking at our strengths, looking at our weaknesses, and, and uh, figuring out what, what, what are we doing right, what can we do better. So, um, and I would encourage everyone to be a part of that. I think November 14th, there's a kickoff event that is uh, that, that they've solicited from, uh, uh, remarks, comments, and ideas. So be a part of that, be a part of that uh, effort. 
and it's, it's a very worthwhile effort. Rolando. Yes. Here we go. I'm back. Um, well, why this community is, is a great community to be? Well, I'm, I can respond to that more from my personal position. Uh, I, I thought when I took the decision to move here is because this was um, more affordable. Uh, that was one of the things. The other one is, is a great size city. It's not that big. It's not that small. We have a great hospital. We have a great infrastructure. Great mayor. A great mayor. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and we have amazing places to go and do activities. We have two state parks 20 minutes from here. We have the river crossing right in the middle of the town. I mean, we have beautiful places and have tons of activities to do outside. And uh, that's why this is a very beautiful community. Plus a top-notch historical museum. I mean, one of the best. <laughs> and Chris Ferris Falls is working to create the first impression. What is more important than a first impression? Nothing. So we create the first impression. They come, they visit. We make sure that the visit is the best visit possible, and probably we open the doors to people to think, like I, like I did, oh, I want to move here. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, for, I'm going to answer a little bit from a personal side. First, when I parade around and visit a, a small town, I tend to judge that town by its downtown and what it, what it looks like and thriving. And when I look around now compared to you know, had brought up when Target closed. Downtown is thriving and it's growing, but downtown can't support itself. Retail doesn't support retail. And so we look to grow other business to help, help grow those retail businesses that can come and make a thriving downtown. Um, also, as I look around the room from a welcoming community side, I see so many people that I talk to every day, uh, run into at football games or or hockey, or walking through town, and all of you, all the people that I communicate with, are so pro Fergus, or so welcoming to what's what's going to grow. How do we grow? Here's some suggestions. Here's something I saw that was really great. Here's what I want to do with my business, and I I think that's amazing. I mean. I, I could name 45 of you that I'm looking at right now who have approached me with that. And I think that's outstanding for a community that there's so many people that are interested in seeing movement in our community and see us grow and, and get better. Yeah, I, I, I would echo what, what Ryan said, that the people are friendly, they are welcoming, and we have a business community that's strong and dedicated to supporting our community. This is why we do the Fergus Falls Business Gives, is our businesses are, are generous. They're not just in business to be in business to make a profit. They're here for the betterment of, betterment of the whole community, and I would say that is one of the strongest assets that we have is our business community, that they're they want to succeed and they want the community to succeed, so they're willing to give back. And that, to me, is the number one thing. Yeah, you know, just being nice makes an impression on people who are visiting us. Yeah. You know, whether it's a visiting sports team or just tourists. Be nice. Now, last question. Research shows that people are more likely to move to a community and take a job in that community if they have previously visited it as a tourist or seated on some you know, travel advertising. So where in this cycle does your organization come in and how do you partner with the tourism industry in our area? Maybe we'll start with Lisa Morgan. Okay, so we're almost like the step two of the tourism and the marketing. So Rolando and even Amy could touch on some of that marketing when it comes to outside the area. I know with Visit Fergus Falls, we wanted to show this video today because we live it, we're here, but we're not the target market for that marketing. But when a 
visitor comes to a community, again, the first stop is off in the chamber. They're looking at, you know, getting information, questions answered. We try to be Google as best we can, whether it's a phone call, an email, or a drop by, um, but we're not quite Google yet. We're working on it, though. But we consider ourselves a community concierge. We're here to answer questions, to help people relocate, um, to give them ideas on things to do, whether they come as a first-time visitor or a multiple-time visitor. We want to invite them to participate in local events, attractions, and of course, refer them directly to our local business chamber members. Rolando? Well, uh, I kind of answered that question before. I mean, I am, I mean, we are like the step number one when people visit. And uh, when they go to the office, you know, busy first, the job of busy first falls is to make sure that they're going to have a great experience. Um, and we're going to point them to the places that they really want to enjoy the you know, what's, you know, they're going to vacation on their visit. Um, yeah, that's, we are the step one, the first impression. That is probably the one that is going to make people to come back. And you're the person to do it. Yeah, I tried. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Amy Baldwin? Yeah, Otter to Lakes Country Association is, is our step one on that from the county's perspective. And it uses messaging that is framed and actually based on you know some of that research that um, so our messaging is, if you'll notice, not necessarily specific to a visitor or someone who might be looking to come here. It's, it's a little, it's generalized in that sense. Um, and uh, I, you know, I'm, I work with the Otter to Lakes Country folks, so I can't take any credit for this number, but year to date, they've had um, close to 10 million social media impressions through um, the various channels that they utilize and leverage, and that is promoting all the great assets in Fergus Falls and across the county. So uh, they really do a great job in getting that messaging out and be that, that uh, draw for folks to come in um, and I'll just share a little fun, fun news if you haven't heard, but uh, a docu-series that Otter to Lakes Country worked to prepare uh, or produce um, called Rural by Choice um, did win an Emmy this week in its uh, category. documentary and so that uh, is available on YouTube on the Otter to Lakes Country channel so if you haven't seen it there is two seasons to it you know they're no more than like 10 minutes a piece so they're, they're really fun snippets that highlight um, why people choose to live in a rural place and it gets to that messaging about that there are great assets there's great opportunities there's great health care there's great education there's great community amenities I'm looking right at Katie Gano for you know Otter Code was featured in one of those uh, episodes so it's um, it, it, it was a fun and fun to see our work recognized on that regional level. So congratulations to those who are involved in that. Um, um, who that needs fun. Ashton Kutcher? Come on, this is we got our own assets. Did he come through? Caribou or something? Yeah. <laughs> thank you, panel. Thank you very much for your participation. Now we have some questions from you that Jean Bowman. The Queen of Communication in Fergus Falls will be. Hi, everybody. Thanks again for being here. Um, on your table are some yellow sheets of paper. If there's a question that you're dying to have asked, um, please bring that over. I'll come over to you. I'm going to start out with some questions that were uh, submitted to the chamber earlier in this process. And we started with five questions, but the panel's done an awesome job answering a couple. So I took the liberty of, of taking out a couple of them. So the first one. Is there a strategic vision for the city? And if so, where can this information be found? So who on our panel might like to take that there, Ben? <laughs> yeah, so, so, so uh, forever, the city didn't have a comprehensive plan. At least in my, I've been in local government for 14 years, and we did not have a comprehensive plan for the city. Um, over the past two years, uh, Claire Beck, our community development manager, has led that process of strategic planning. We looked at it as a five-year plan, uh, just because when you're in city government, it's 10-year, it, 15-year plans are, are difficult in the sense because your governing body changes every two years, right? 
we looked at four areas to, to try to get a start that we could really actually uh, get, get a handle on, and that was economic development, community development, land use, and infrastructure. And so you can find that. So we do have a five-year strategic uh, plan in those areas that, that we think uh, is the, the, the framework and the, and the base for a larger, broader, comprehensive plan. Um, but to start somewhere that, that's meaningful, that can, we can see results, um, is where we want, we want to start, rather than go through an 18-month process of putting a thick, comprehensive plan on the shelf that gets, that's, gets ignored by the next city council. So that, that's that's the, the theory behind the comprehensive plan that the city just went through, and you can find it on our website. Thank you. I think this next question is for you, Ryan. What is the community doing to attract developers? We see neighboring communities like Purim attract developers like Epic to do a five-story mixed-use building in downtown and good neighbors investment in Battle Lake. Fergus Falls has prime riverfront real estate, that's the dairy property, and untouched housing potential property on north on the northern property. And these are both right for development. How can Fergus Falls attract some of that work? Yeah, we. Uh... We're constantly having conversations with developers um, to, to answer some of those good neighbors property. also did a project here. We do have the project going at the mill. Um, we have a number of development groups in and involved. I think those specific properties I can't speak to, but we are constantly having those conversations. And as deals come through, as we find the right thing, um, I mean, FM Bank's making a huge investment in town, so we're pursuing those. I think often we forget to look local or see what's local because projects take a long time to start, and especially now, time frames are years. And so things that we're working on now, we might not see in the near term, but we're, we're constantly making those connections and pursuing those opportunities. And one of the things I know you've said before is that um, you know, while you're working on it, it's all confidential. So the first time we might hear about it is when the deal is done. So it's it's happening. Amy? Yeah, I was just going to piggyback and you mentioned a couple of those properties um, and also to pitch this. So on your table, there was a, uh, a couple of flyers for a housing summit that we're hosting through Ottertail County. It's on November 16th. It is over at Thumper Pond to be central within the county, but um, one of the sessions there will include the city talking about its opportunity sites. So just a way, again, to highlight how we work together. Um, we have folks coming from well outside the region um, to that event that are already signed up. So as far as you know, getting those projects in front of people who maybe didn't hear about them before or missed some of the promotion of the RFP for the dairy property, for instance, that there'll be that opportunity for the city to share about that project and opportunity at that um, kind of more of a regional um, event. So just wanted to share that as a, another way that we work to elevate messages too. Great, thank you. This is the last question I have. So while somebody's answering, raise your hand if you've got a yellow sheet of paper for me and I'll come to you. What is the status of the West Ridge Mall? Chris, this one's for you. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> no. Ben, you want to take a shot? Well, well, well um, so the, uh, so the mall's privately owned, obviously. The, the mall's owned by an individual that lives in Chicago. Obviously, I don't think it's a, uh, I, I'm not going out on a limb by saying that that individual is not invested in Fergus Falls the way the people that, that, that in this room are invested in Fergus Falls. Uh, the city's doing what we can. We've, uh, we, we've worked with that, the owner of the mall to say, so Dunham's, Dollar Tree, uh, the movie theater, they all own their, their portions of the mall separately. We've separated utilities off to allow that to happen, to allow that to happen, we've replatted it. Um, we're doing what we can to, uh, to, make, to make that property something, you know, to divide it up, I guess, to plan it out is the, is the way that we've found that we can um, at least have something going on there. Uh, meanwhile, we're trying, to, we're trying to get local ownership of the entire parcel. If, if, at, at one point, it would be great. If not, we're going to do a bit at a time until we get control that uh, property. So we're doing what we can in a challenging situation. Thanks, Ben. A question from the audience. Does the city have any plans for cab service? Which isn't a, a public service, but anybody in the private sector anyone's heard about? Anyone in the audience? Yeah. The audience? No. 
Doyle Transport and uh, Moscow and everything. Uh, I'll tell you that. I'll tell you that. There's a private. <coughs> I might tell you another one. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Moderator. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize for the late that I missed the call. You know, if that's okay with you, sir. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, think about your soup for you. Yeah. Um, there's a company out of Moncton, Doyle. I think it's called Doyle Transport or something like that. There's the do that's kind of filled that gap. But it's an opportunity for any private entrepreneur in Fergus Falls. So uh, I would add to the the city has you know with 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 Uber, Lyft, with cab services and stuff. City's re, 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 uh, relaxed its its regulations of that industry just to make sure that there are no barriers for entry for any private in, you know, entity. I mean, of course, and we've worked with our public safety, a chief of public safety on that, but we're, we're, we want to make sure that, that there's no barriers that um, that the city is imposing on any private business that wants to be into that. Of course, we're going to make sure it's, it's a safe industry, but we're not going to put barriers up to that, to that industry. Oh, I have another question. I, I don't know, and I don't, yeah, I, don't get, I don't get to preview it, so what if it's inappropriate? I know, <laughs> it is. And, and you have good penmanship, so points for that. We have many fabulous short stay treatment centers for individuals struggling with their mental health or substance use. How are we helping those people feel welcome to stay long term and work or live in our community? Well, I'll, just, I'll take. You know, I think Fergus Falls, obviously, because of its history with the Regional Treatment Center, has a history of welcoming people that have challenges with their mental health in our community. Have we always been perfect at doing that? No. Uh, but the recent example of, of working with um, the county and the Port Authority to provide the 16-bed uh, unit is an example. We're trying to work through this. It's one of the number one issues that any community is facing. It's how we deal with mental illness. Uh, I think that as federal and state funding has changed, it's on local communities, but it's um, it's something that's it's real. I think that it's real, but it's sometimes on the surface. We maybe need to discuss it more as a community. Um, and that's, again, building partnerships, I think, is, is critical to that success with the county um, and with the, with the, uh, the efforts that the state is, is, is making on that issue. Any other questions? And the, and the, and the non-profit, too, a place to belong is a perfect example um, of a way that the city is hopefully a good partner um, with, with, with those nonprofit agencies that are trying to tackle this. It's going to take everyone to truly address that issue. I don't think there's anyone in this room that doesn't have that doesn't have a connection to that issue in some, in some way. Sierra has a question. And this might be our last question because I know we're about at time. She wants to know if we're going to have a quick trip it would be a great addition to this talk. Yeah, that's the private sector. Anybody know how we're doing on convenience stores, gas stations, things like that? I can't 100% answer. I, I can tell you that there's some interest in, in bringing some other businesses in similar lines this direction. <laughs> How's that for a non answer? Yeah. Next slide. <laughs> You know, and I think that's what's great about Fergus Falls is that we need to dream about what can be here, what could be here, what businesses we like and would support here. I will give you a first-hand information that our Jersey Mites will be opening on November 8th, and they are looking for uh, weekend and evening employees. So if you have any high school students, uh, encourage them to apply for Jersey Mites. Those are some of the things that we need to do to support the businesses these exciting new businesses that come to our community is to provide workforce for them. So if anyone needs a second job or wants to get money for Christmas or anything like that, you know, it's good side hustle time, right? All right, here's a question from Thomas with Swan Lake Resort. Lots of optimism is up there. What are you worried or concerned about? Good question. I mean, I'll start with that one because I, we're seeing it a lot from the development side, but both interest rates and where the economy's at currently are, are barriers to starting projects. So it, it is a concern as we watch that and we'll see. Thankfully, there's still investment happening. There's a, a lot of 
things moving forward. There's private funds out there, so we're always looking at those opportunities, but it is it is something we're watching. Yeah, I, mean, I would echo some of those same things from that development community, interest rates, construction costs, uh, labor availability, um, all impacting what we know could be and what people want to, to see happen and, and developers, even what they want to have happen. Uh, sometimes there's timing by those, those realities. Good. Anybody else? Well, while I slowly walk this microphone back to the front, I just want to remind you about this beautiful meeting and conference space and how awesome it would be to have your meetings and training here or somebody's wedding. There was a beautiful wedding here over the weekend. So again, this is one of those partnerships, a city-owned facility, lots of private events here. So please keep the big one in mind for your next event. Did that very well. Session. <laughs> well, uh, thank you all for coming. I appreciate it. Um, have a good afternoon, great week. And again, thanks. Appreciate it.